Brampton, um, who has visited the school before, a number of years ago, and who has intended to visit the school on a number of occasions. But on this one, he's actually here. And we're very happy to see him. Um, we've asked Ken to address our collective topic of landscape and economy, which is the school-wide uh, interest for this academic year. But uh, I think um, even if it weren't our school theme for this year, we might well have asked him to speak about landscape and economy because they uh, somehow in the topic, I think, is encompassed a lot of his own interest in the, in the making of architecture, indeed in the origins of the making of architecture. Um, in my own life, uh, for those of you who have any interest in these kind of things, uh, I, when I was a schoolboy, my father used to buy the AD magazine, and so from the age of 13 I've been reading Ken Frampton's um, articles, so I'm kind of immersed in um, he has his, his footprints all over my mind of his way of thinking and his uh, way of reading and his, and his aspiration for what architecture might mean in society. And I don't, when I say that footprints on my mind, I think there are footprints of his thinking all over uh, our culture and um, international culture and our particular interest in the culture, in architectural culture in Ireland. So this is the moment, and uh, I see people are still gathering for it. Um, I ask you to give your attention <coughs> to uh, a thought leader in architecture in the world, and a friend and visitor to our school, Kenneth Frampton. <laughs> Basically, I, I think some people may have read this essay, but I, I, I gave a, a lecture in the States uh, some time ago now, at the beginning of the 90s, I'm ashamed to say, uh, uh, which had the title Make a Form as Urban Landscape. I've sort of, I suppose, uh, been uh, hung up on this, uh, well, whatever this means, Make a Form as Urban Landscape, for some time. And uh, actually, there is one building that set me off in this direction, which is the building in the Avenida Diagonal in, in uh, Barcelona by Rafael Moneo and uh, Manuel de Sola Morales, um, which I first saw as a project you know, when Moneo was still, uh, uh, well, he still is teaching at Harvard, but when he was still chairman. And then, uh, of course, I saw it finally built. I saw it, of course, his images and so on and so forth. What, uh, what I found so stimulating is that uh, it is a very large building. I think it's 800 meters in length. Uh, it, has a pro it has a particular profile that's very, very important, in my opinion, to the way in which it works in relation to the uh, uh, Sancha, the uh, gridded layout of, of, uh, of you know, Sardar from the, from the middle of the 19th century onwards, and to the kind of rather chaotic inner suburbs that a cluster around Barcelona, of course. And uh, it seemed to me that this um, um, profile, obviously somewhat indebted to Alpert, was, was uh, you know, crucial. I mean, not the only crucial thing, but a crucial thing. That, and uh, of course, this use of the term megaform, one can ask oneself the question quite legitimately, what's the difference between megaform and megastructure? It's very hard to sort that one out, I think. I mean, the only way, rather namely, what I, you know, if one says that Sartre probably do is a megastructure, for example, or could perhaps say that, uh, um, you know, where the structure is the primary expressive element, in a mega form, the form is the primary expressive element, it's not the structure. <coughs> uh, though, you know, this opposition may, of course, there are many variations, but, you know, they're not entirely mutually exclusive, but I think that, I think, for I would say, I think one can make that point. And what impresses me also about the uh, either uh, impossible to pronounce, I think it is ear block, one should say actually, but it's spelled of course L apostrophe I double L A. Uh, that this block was uh, I, I somehow like the fact that this block was a piece of 
capitalist investment. It was Winter Tour Insurance Company that was the money behind this block. And the fact that the block is a mixed-use block and the fact that it contains a shopping mall which uh, uh, symbiotically backs up the shopping frontage and therefore the shopping frontage of the avenue that the, the Argonauts maintain. I mean, I find that somehow programmatically significant. And then also the fact that the building is already partly mixed use, it's primarily offices, of course, but it has a small hotel. And then I've never figured out quite where this hotel is. And it has a sort of school, I think, and that's about it. But one notices that the, the way the building is treated, again, from the point of view of future and investment, I like the fact that it has these punch windows which somehow suggests that it could, of course, be converted from office building to residences, you know, but it has, it's not a curtain wall operation and so on. And anyway, that, I mean, for better or for worse, that, that, that building um, set me off, so to speak. And <coughs> with this question of, uh, and, and this kind of a, 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 a ambiguity built into the title, Make a Form as Urban Landscape, uh, I suppose, uh, well, why don't I just then say, uh, when I gave the talk, and if I were to give it now with images, I mean, amongst the images I would include would be, uh, maybe the most uh, um, very telling image is the image of, of Hans Poltzig's House of Friendship of 1917 for Istanbul, which is a kind of hanging gardens of Babylon stepped uh, uh, thing. Uh, as a most beautiful kind of uh, horizontal perspective in which you see the minarets and the domes of Istanbul and you see this mountainous, mountain-like object rising on the, not built. And, uh, and then, you know, one thinks of other German work, you know, like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm someone who thinks that Mendelssohn is incredibly important, undervalued um, figure of the, of the heroic. Uh, period, you know, uh, uh, for this idea of a kind of mega continuity in, in such an into the urban fabric, you know, uh, thinking of his metal union building in Berlin, but also project for the uh, um, and, and um, you know, his uh, shock and uh, department stores, you know, that the way in which they have this kind of uh, energized, sort of formal uh, driving character. You know, I, I, so I think you know, Mendelssohn would, would, uh, would, is in that set of illustrations, or also Sharoun, uh, um, you know, for his breath of uh, 29 housing uh, block, but also, of course, later the Philharmonie, for example, also a kind of mountain-like thing. And Alto, of course, clearly, you know, the, so that, uh, you know, Baker Dorm, of course, you know, and, and, uh, uh, the, the way in which this, this formal continuity creates a kind of artificial, uh, uh, well, as though it, you know, sometimes almost you could say a kind of geological metaphor is created in in in, uh, in the work of Alto, but also in this kind of line of thinking. Uh, um, I, f I find that very powerful, and I associate then the ear, ear block, you know, back to that tradition and. Well, I, mean, I think it's rather obvious that, that it, it does have a, a link to Alto, you know, in, in the way the horizontal profile of the building is, is articulated. And, um, well, that, I mean, it was immediate. I mean, there's another Alto project which is not very well known, which is 1952 for the Vogel Wiedplatz in Vienna, where, you know, the, it is actually an auditorium with a cantilevered roof, cable cantilevered roof, which also had, takes on a somewhat mountain-like ca characteristic. And with his astonishing genius, of course, there is a, 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 also an orthogonal part, which has swimming pools and so on, that sort of crash into this mountain form. You know, not, unfortunately, not built. And another piece of altos which is not built is this where the rail enters uh, uh, Helsinki, you know, there is this enormous lake, Tulu, you know, uh, by the side of it, and there is a beautiful project by him of bringing auto routes into the city, where the auto routes themselves, in relation to the lake and the 
the uh, rail lines, you know, create a kind of new landscape, artificial landscape. I mean, and which carries with it the idea that on the shores of the lake would be sort of cultural buildings that would be, as it were, a sort of staccato articulation of, of the otherwise sweeping form of the, of the transport systems. Uh, of which there is one built, of course, which is the Finlandia Hall. <coughs> and so it is stuff like that that interests me. And, and, and uh, the, then, you know, the, the, then the panorama opens you know, from a building which has a, a kind of landscape character to uh, a landscape that has a, a, it's like a kind of built domain. You know, that, doesn't actually become a building, but, you know, and I think that the, the, the architectural profession as a whole has an enormous, I think that landscape has more to give to the architectural profession than the architectural profession has to give to the landscape, and that, you know, the school, but which we don't probably know enough about, I surely don't know about, about which is this school established in Versailles, this French landscape school by Courage, you know, that's, we should know much more about all that. And then there is this brilliant uh, woman I also know only fragmentary <coughs> is Michel Devine, which is this one of the kind of um, very fertile landscape architects produced by this school. So I, you know, uh, now I'm talking about like I would like to, if I have, if I survive, uh, rather up to write a book with the title that would be so well, working title is Mega Formers and the Landscape, but I don't know what the title would be, but I would like to write a book which would sort of, you know, put an emphasis on all of this. And I, you know, another person that I think it, it was, it's, you know, also maybe partly forgotten, is Arthur Erickson, you know, uh, Robson Square, Vancouver, but also Simon Fraser University and also Lethbridge University, where the university campus is conceived as a kind of continuous landscape piece. Uh, I th in Lethbridge, of course, with real mega bridge-like building, but, but uh, you know, I think that Robson Square in Vancouver, which, which you know, is partly a, a courthouse, but then it breaks up into the municipal offices, into a wedding hall, and, and where he works very closely with the landscape architect Cornelia Oberlander, is you know, it, 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 it sort of it ties Vancouver together. I think you know, in, in the rebuilt Vancouver is very dependent on it on the idea of what is there. Which, you know, that may clarify some of the remarks I, I made this morning, which is that, uh, um, ah, yes, oh, this is maybe, you know, what, <coughs> okay, uh, I don't know how to begin with this, like, you know, the, 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 and it's also true elsewhere, but it's so true in the United States, the megalopolis is so dominant, you know. I mean, you know, and, and people at different times in one's life would tell you like 85% of the built environment or more has no architect that ever got anywhere near any of it. You know. And so, what is this profession? You know. It reminds me of the time that Rafael Pignoli uh, uh, did not succeed in, in persuading Donald Trump to, to take him on, you know, when he when you know what happened is that the New York had clients called BA Capital. They came to New York, they thought they could get over the rail yards and build a huge development. But of course New York being New York wasn't going to let Argentines come in here and do this. So they got rid of them and Donald Trump took over. The disastrous results, the most horrible buildings imaginable have been built on the rail yards. But the only once went to Donald Trump and got thrown out, you know, and he came to me and I just said, Careless, what is this fucking profession for? What is that fucking sound? <laughs> <cell?" laughs> you know, but, but so he's done all right, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know <coughs> with his three pairs of spectacles. Anyway, uh, it's all right. Anyway, um, but, you know, this question of the megalopolis, you know, going back to that, I mean, I, I remain very impressed by Francois Schoen, who I think, you know, when simple minds get, uh, like mine, get impressed by aphoristic statements. I mean, she once said the obvious, which is that the auto root system and all the rest of it would be not negotiable at all if it were not for the graphic science. And obvious, of course, but somehow, if someone says it, you know, it sort of goes home. 
And uh, I, I think, you know, this proliferation of objects, which the megalopolis is, uh, which is like, in, like internet, uh, you know, there is no landmark. Now, that's the issue. You know? and it, so I put this bee in my bonnet that, you know, uh, this question of intervention uh, and uh, landscape as intervention. You know, and 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 or buildings conceived topographically as having a landscape character as intervention, Baker Dawn, Alton, etc. You know, would be a kind of strategy that could be uh, used in this miasma of the megalopolis. You know, providing one has you know programmatically something inside it which 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 is compelling. You know, and and. Uh, um, it makes me think of all these kind of uh, shopping centers, you know, with their black top. Uh, unlike Mirko Zardini, I can't get enthusiastic about asphalt. On the contrary, I think black top is like one of the most <coughs> nightmarish material, materials imaginable. And, uh, you know, when you think that you could uh, 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 um, densify these shopping facilities along with cinemas and God knows what else, you know, to make something that is more uh, present as a form, and as a place than what they are, you know. Hence, make a form as a, as a landscape. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, brings me to, too many issues here, but brings me to this question of urban design, you know, like all these departments of urban design, or for that matter, urban planning, you know. And you, you have this uneasy feeling, or, or I just should speak for myself, you have this uneasy feeling, or I, I have another memory, which is, Jersey Zoltan, Polish immigrant architect in Harvard, giving a public speech somewhere and saying, what would happen to surgery if it was never practiced? You know, making an analog to urban design. You know, what is it? You know, what are, you know, it's all right inside the academy, but where and what? What the hell do we do? Or well, urban planners for that matter. You know, all right, they do maybe infrastructure then. I mean, anyway, we reduce urban planning to. Um, I don't know what, land, land allocation, land value, uh, infrastructure. Well, these things are important, I think, and that probably still does form some uh, coherent practice. But in a way, one often has this uneasy feeling that urban design is, is a, you know, and, and we have urban design departments at Columbia, and, and, you know, and uh, very good people and so on, but sometimes I look at the stuff on the wall and think, this is just master planning all over again, you know, these huge areas. Uh, uh, and that maybe what's more important is, and that's why it brings me back to Ida Block and to Manuel de Sol Morales, who amongst others coined this term urban occupants, which I find a very fertile <coughs> metaphor. And, and then the idea of intervention, you know, that you can intervene into the body in the same way as you could, you know, like occupant. And so that you have in mind maybe a analytic effect that cannot be entirely uh, predetermined, but you think of the intervention in terms of it provoking something or, or focusing something. You know. So, I mean, that's why, I, so I think, you know, this megaform thing is tied up with this idea of acupuncture. And, uh, and, and it is the same manual of the summer of course, who was with Mineo doing this building. Here, uh, you know, Ear block. And uh, I think I'm almost run out of stuff. But I. I uh, Can you say something about marking the ground? Ah, yes, thank you. Marking the ground. Yes. Well, that's that beautiful uh, story about aphorism you get, you know, which is the Kentucky Rocky, who is, in my opinion, not sufficiently appreciated in the Anglo American world as one of the most subtle intellectuals in the field, you know, critical intellectuals, amazing, amazing. So he says somewhere, you know, uh, uh, architecture doesn't begin with the primitive heart, but with the marking of ground in order to establish cosmos, basically, against the chaos of nature, I mean, in primitive, un man un in this under so-called primitive conditions. And, uh, um, and so, you know, urban intervention, whether it's built or not built, uh, in the sense of dividing between architecture and landscape architecture, you know, is a kind of mark, has its power, tension in this market, you know, this against, uh, you know, because we are 
the, the, the cosmos chaos, you know, because we have made in the megalopolis a kind of never-ending chaos. You know, that, so we had the, the talking animal was uh, presented with the, with the chaos, quote unquote, of nature, and now much, much, much later, seemingly so, the talking animal has created the chaos, you know, and and so then the issue comes back, you know. Mark your time, and thank you very much. That's a good way to end the thing. <laughs> okay. So questions, you know, <coughs> provocations. back to its economic job condition of 2007. Where are we going to find 10 million jobs? You know, it's such an indictment of the capitalist system. And, and uh, it, this capitalist system is in trouble, I think. It's in trouble, you know. Of course, it's destroying everything in the process. But, uh, you know, it's very, I mean, it's very political of me to say this, but I don't, uh, you know, and so, uh, you know, living in one's own limited reality, one, one does what one can do, you know, I mean, one can't, one has, like, uh, that's why I made this point about Winter Tour Insurance Company and the ear, ear, that is capital also, but one can make these moves, I think, but one should try to make them, you know, one should sort of think big enough and small enough at the same time, you know, that's not a very good answer. But. does one do when everything stops? Um, you know, the, the issue you, you talk about in relation to the urban capitalist system, I mean, particularly here at the moment, everything it has stopped and is stopping even more because any decisions that might have been taken to do things is now being put off to other entities. And <coughs> architects then find themselves in a situation where there's no opportunity to do. Equally, when you make propositions about individual things, individual buildings, they're often the response is, well, we can't consider that individual thing 
but do we have a master plan in which to place it in this context? And that's been an excuse and a reason, I suppose, in, in, in lots of cities, but often here, to, uh, and I'm just wondering, how does one counter that in, I don't know this is a pretty difficult question maybe, but how does one counter that in, in a kind of philosophical sense, or in a sense of, of how does one do when everybody says don't? Yeah. Well, you did use the word master plan in the process uh, when you were presenting the question. Yeah. And I think that that sort of ghost of the master plan is still a problem in a way. You know, that, uh, like it's also a delusion. It's a techno-scientific <coughs> delusion. I mean, we're full of a lot of techno-scientific delusions, which are then used bureaucratically and otherwise to prop up certain institutions, etc., etc. I mean, in some ways, the, perhaps we could say universities that don't, don't do a very good job in creating a generation that have a, a different way of cutting it, you know, vis-a-vis -vis technoscience, for example, because, of course, we do know that all the money is pumped into technoscience, you know, and uh, because it's tied to this, this other, in a sense, an illusion, I think, you know. And, and, t and getting at that, I think, is, diff is difficult, but, but the universities are places where one could try to build a discourse which uh, just put, formulates the, the question and the problem differently. You know, I think that the, this question of master plan, because it suggests you know, that there is a techno-scientific rational way of handling all this, you know, because we'll get the master plan and then everything will fit into place. But we also know that master plans produced, you know, kind of terrible de devastations and uh, were used simply as, as legi legitimizing real estate operations of the most ruthless kind, right? I mean, we do know that, I think. And, and, but I think that uh, it's not so easy to cultivate a, 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 another discourse which is more uh, precise and uh, also more accessible to uh, ordinary people, not, as, it's not just a closed... Uh, you know, architect talk and so on. I think it's quite difficult. That, that is also built into your question, I think, in a way. And I'm just wondering then, as a follow-on from that, in your experience internationally, is there a place where you have seen, you know, the, the kind of approach or the, the achievement of that, that, that phrase you used, urban acupuncture, um, as seen from urban surgery or even oh. urban dentistry, you know, oh. that kind of notion that someone has to do with the kind of sense of picking up on the energy. Is there, a, is there a, somewhere that you have felt, hmm, that's close to what you would say might be a way, rather than the notion of blitz and blight and kind of remake and, you know, because that sense of, of, of what a, a lot of architects seem to do best and is how is how something is actually picked picked up on a contextual sense, or how its energy is responded to, or how there's kind of some of the, the kind of pattern of history that's responded to, or whatever. And, and so I just wonder in that context, in terms of of your own of your own analysis of things, have you have, have, have you ever seen something that comes to that? You know, I, I, I think you know, your question and you know, this line of question makes me think all this time about you know, which I feel also very, uh, you know, I don't think I do a very good job either, you know. Which is, and I don't think, uh, you know, the institution I belong to does do such a good job. I also I don't think it does such a good job. By which I mean the following. You know, uh, there is, I mean, that's very ironic. But there is this operation in, in uh, Brazil, Curitiba, which everybody sort of knows about. But there is no book on Curitiba. It's very weird, you know. There is no really systematic study of Curitiba. And Jaime Nana, you know, who's still active and so on, He's an amazing person, and actually, what you're just saying reminds me of something, because in the talk that Lerma gave, he says, it's very important for me to act fast, you know, because I have to act fast enough to defeat my own bureaucracy. It's an incredible statement. But otherwise, they will be, they'll eat me, you know. And, and uh, but I think, you know, that's a sort of a bit of a digression. I mean, I think this question of, of, uh, you know, and then we, we talk about the global and all this. In fact, we don't know, you know, there's all sorts of work done all over the world, which is an interesting kind of differences are, are, are sort of have been made or are being made, right? And we, and we don't, we sort of, you know, they're sort of out there somewhere, we sort of vaguely know about them, but we don't know, 
you know, or I, for instance, talking about Michel Levine. I mean, I know one project, two projects. Do I know what Michel? No, I don't. I mean, but I know it's, there is work all over the place. You know that we ought to know better, basically. And so, even though we use this word research, and even though the university breathes down one's neck, you know, because we aren't doing hard enough research, their idea of research is all linked to techno-scientific, empirical this and that, right? But uh, but there is another kind of research, I mean, the cultural research, the cultural political research, that we, we don't do very well, I think. And um, if only we could sort of move that, you know, it would be encouraging, I think. You know, it's, and I'm uh, sort of uh, slightly evading your question, you know, but I think Curitiba or, <coughs> or maybe, you know, what happens in Scandinavia in general. <coughs> um, you know, it would be the stuff. I'm sure there's things to be learned from. You know, we tend to ignore Scandinavia. I don't know why we do. <laughs> I mean, I sometimes think that the only people in the world who really realise that democracy are the Scandinavians. Small populations, well educated, relatively wealthy. You know, middle class population. I mean, that, that's democracy. You know. Uh, the United States is so big, it's very difficult to have. What do we really mean by democracy? Anyway. Um, I'm thinking about the megaform buildings and thinking about really big buildings. Do you think that there can be a really big building that's a great building? Well, I think the Unité Marseille is a great building, for sure, uh, in my opinion. Uh, but, you know, it isn't perhaps maybe the gross size that's the issue. It's the, it's the, the formal energy of the piece, I think, that's, the, that's important. I mean, you know, you know maybe Ea Block is not a great building, you know, in the sense of, you know, this is great architecture. But it's very significant. Very significant work, I think, you know, uh, because of what it suggests as a potential, you know, because, yeah, I mean, you know, that's my feeling. Yeah. And you were you referred to Barcelona, obviously, a few times. I'm just thinking in relation to these issues of landscape and urban design that you mentioned. I'm thinking of the fact that the profession in Catalonia, you know, they're all architects, essentially, where they all start as architects, and then they become planners or urban designers or landscape architects. And do you think that's significant in, in terms of the, maybe the success that they've had? Yeah, because they also have had their failures, you know. I mean, I was there recently, and I went to the forum for the first time, you know. I mean, what a nightmare that is. I mean, it denies everything that was even strong in the Catalan tradition. And uh, it's like a profligate waste of money, you know. I think the forum is a profligate waste of money and, and the kind of destruction of their own culture. That's how I look at it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think. This strange field, I mean, I like, maybe it's not a really very good answer, but I like, uh, uh, again, Alvarez, I'm not a total purpose case. Al Alvarez either said somewhere, I tell them, the university authorities, that an architect is a specialist in non-specialization, but they cannot take that, not even as a joke. <laughs> and I think what is funny about this art field is that you know, in a way, uh, architects, you know, uh, I think that the, 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 the division of labor, to some extent, allows people within the pockets of the divided labor to, to conceive of a reality which is only within the boundaries of that divided labor. You know, it's summed up by, which dates me, Tom Lehrer's song, you know, about Werner von Braun, you know, where the lion goes, the rockets go up, who cares where they come down? It's not my department, said Werner von Braun. <laughs> I mean, this is not 
given to an architect because architects in a strange way look at reality, you know, the, the client, the building site, the material. Reality is a sort of mirror that is, is present in their activity, you know, whereas you know, a, a, a biogeneticist or a physicist can go into some laboratory somewhere or other and got, got, you know, participate in the techno-scientific onward and upwards, but our architects are, 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 are confronted with material reality and I think that's the strength of this funny field.